Okay, on this video, I just want to give you a bit of a demonstration on uh, scanning the fork and, um, and the sort of things that we find. The, um, I've got a fork here and I've deliberately debranded it. Um, I've done that because it's, it's not just this fork that has, um, that has problems. And people get to be carried away with brands. Um, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's this brand has got a problem and that brand's got a problem. Um, what I want to focus on today in this video is process, not brands. So that's why I've debranded this fork. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you the sort of, the sort of things that we've, uh, that we've found um, in this fork and in other forks. So there's, there's been, um, recently there's been a number of, of cases where I've done a scan, I've found flaws in, uh, in the crown of the fork um, from the scan. And the customer um, of mine who's, who, who had the scan organized has then gone back to the brand and said, um, you know, I want, uh, I, you know, can you comment on, uh, on, on this report? And in, in both cases, it was uh, initially dismissed as a, oh, no, Lucia doesn't know what he's talking about, blah, 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 or, you know, he's not authorised um, to make comments on that. Um, this, and then, you know, the scan is not, um, you know, you can't find things with the scan. You need to do this, you need to do that. Um, anyway, so in, in this example, the, uh, I had the fork and then I said, well, okay, if uh, I'm 100% confident in the scan. So when an interface shows up on the scan, and I'll show you that um, in a minute, what it looks like, when an interface shows up on the scan, there is something there. Um, and then experience from the, uh, the technician doing the scan can, I, can identify what that, that, that uh, indication on the scan relates to in, in, uh, in a real part. So now I'm going to show you what the signal looks like uh, on the ultrasound A scan. So if we first go to the, uh, to the area where we can see uh, from the cut up that there is a void. So that void was obviously found with the scan and then it was cut up because the part was scrapped. So if we go over to the Part. It's trying to hold it. And so you can see right there. So the wall thickness, I'll see if I can hold it and, uh, and point to the screen. So that's the back wall. So that's, um, that axis is time, which because we'll, we've got a, a set velocity that indicates thickness. And this is signal strength. I can just turn the gain up a little bit here. There we go. So back onto the part, if, we, if we're looking at the back wall here, and we know that that's the back wall because when we touch the face, we dampen the signal. Moving along, and there's a void right there. We can, we can size it. So it goes from starting to pop up about here. And then disappearing about here. So that's how we know the size of it. And we know the depth of it. So it's approximately you know, 1.3 mil from the front surface, whereas the back wall is approximately 2.6, 2.7 thereabouts. So that's um, just an example of the scan. 
and how we uh, find voids in the crown of forks. So as you can see in the scan, we, uh, we found some areas of, uh, of concern and you know, that, that, that also on the other leg, which hasn't been cut, up, cut open, we found similar indications and uh, you know, on the front and the, and the back. So clearly it's, uh, it's a production it's a process problem. So, um, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll show you some close-ups of, uh, of that section. I'll, I'll, I'll cut in a couple of stills um, right about now, actually. So here's the uh, crown section of the fork that we've been scanning. As you can see, there's a bit of a wrinkle um, and a lack of compaction, which has created this planar void. So we call it planar voids because it's um, it's planar and it's a void. So yeah, who would have thought about that? So looking right into it, you can see how flat it is. So it's it's in line with the laminate. So when the part was laid up, the air was trapped inside and due to the variations in the compaction that uh, that air wasn't uh, squeezed out so there was no path for it to to bleed out so um, and then we move up further up the crown up to where the brake bridge and you can see the wrinkle and the void in that region there so again same sort of issue variations in the molding which has um, had variations in the compaction and and that's what's led to these uh, manufacturing flaws so you might ask why are these little flaws such a problem well they act as failure initiation points and reduce the structural integrity of the part air is not very strong so as you can see from the stills um, clearly there are voids there and um, yeah you can't deny um, you can't deny that, so you can see it visually. So I suppose all, all I'm getting at is that with, with the proper scan equipment and set up and an experienced uh, technician doing the scan, um, you don't need to cut up parts. You, can, you do the scan. So you know, Boeing don't go and cut up all their parts to see if they've got flaws in them. They scan them. And so that, that's, that's just how it works. So um, the scans are real, the defects are real, let's just keep it real. Okay, on that note, we'll see you again next time. Bye.